Much a short while ago, I spoke with Cleveland Sellers. He's one of the survivors of the Orangeburg massacre. He and others were protesting segregation when state troopers shot into the crowd in Orangeburg. Sellers tells me tonight he is encouraged by the verdict. I want people to take this opportunity to learn about civil rights history and the struggles that many people made, the, the ones who have suffered and died as a result of being on the way to, uh, to victory. And there's still hope. And this kind of adds to that hope in the African-American community. But we still have to be vigilant and we have to be willing to strap up our shoes and continue the march toward complete democracy for everyone and certainly justice for black and, and brown uh, people uh, of this country. With that said, Mr. With that said Mr. how Mr. significant is this? In, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in America tonight. How significant is this case and the outcome of this case all across the nation this evening? This is a, a very significant outcome in this case. And it has to do with the fact that I had just mentioned that for 50 years, I have been waiting on justice to be served in 50 plus years to be served in the shooting of the students on the campus of South Carolina State in 1968, uh, and, and no justice, no justice at all. And uh, so this one kind of gives everybody, I think, a little bit of hope that there's still a chance that justice will prevail in regards to the kind of, of uh, uh, police shootings and the kind of uh, ingests and, and uh, systems that we find all over the country. Cleveland Sellers earlier tonight. Now we're also being joined live this evening by Columbia Defense Attorney Dick Harpootley and he's in Studio G right now with reaction. And Dick, we talked about this yesterday. You told me then that a brief deliberation would be good news for the prosecution and that proved to be true today. Well, I think any time a jury comes back quickly and, and as you know, uh, JR, I've prosecuted and defended dozen, dozens of murder cases. So um, it is uh, my experience, and it was true again today, that a quick verdict typically benefits the prosecution, and that's what happened today. Let's talk about what's next when it comes to the defense here, because there's probably going to be some appeals in this case. Correct? Oh, there are going to be a bunch of appeals. There's all kinds of issues. First of all, um, change of venue. Uh, the defense made the argument that he couldn't get a fair trial uh, in Minneapolis. And of course, during, the, during the, the jury selection or soon thereafter, there was another shooting in Minneapolis, more demonstrations. Um, the judge refused to move uh, the, the, the trial. Now, every one of these jurors was voir dire, questioned about whether they had already made up their mind. So that may have cured it. Uh, the second um, and more uh, uh, difficult issue is we have a conviction on second degree uh, murder, which requires uh, the unintentional killing of someone while committing a felony, and, and that's we call that felony murder in many states. The felony here would be an assault and battery, and this, is, this, this raises huge questions about whether th that level of felony is enough to make it murder. And then, of course, then you've got the, second, the third degree murder, um, which is uh, uh, defined as, again, the unintentional killing in a way that posed a threat to other people. The Minnesota, uh, the judge in initially dismissed uh, that uh, charge and then the Minnesota Court of Appeals told him to reinstate it. That direct issue is on appeal in another uh, police officer case, so that may be problematic. And then the third charge is uh, your manslaughter charge, which is the unintentional killing of somebody in a sort of a grossly negligent way, which uh, I don't see any appellate issues on. But um, this is going to go on for a while. I'm sure he'll be sentenced, what, in about eight weeks. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, you know, look, uh, this is a difficult situation for the Floyd family. It's getting ready to be an extraordinarily difficult situation for the Chauvin family because he's going to get a bunch of time. There is no winner here. There is no, uh, I mean, it's a relief that justice was served. That, uh, and, and by the way, you just had a, an, an American in South Carolina a hero on your show, Cleveland Sellers, who went through this himself almost 50 years ago with no justice. So this hopefully is a step in the direction of showing every American that there's justice for every American. All right, Columbia defense attorney Dick Harpootley and former prosecutor as well. So you have a unique perspective here. You see things from both sides here on this issue. I want to thank you so much for your time. Well, of thank course, you for having me. Absolutely.